My name is Moses Milan. For decades, Confederate monuments have dotted the American landscape. But should they? For many people, Confederate monuments are seen as important pieces of heritage and Southern identity. However, others believe these statues to be blatant symbols of racism and hatred. Which one of these perspectives is the right one? Well, we're here today to find out. And today I have with me uh, Dr. Don Heidenreich, um, Doctor of History and Political Science. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to start us off with a quote, and uh, a, a scholarly quote from one of our most scholarly presidents, as, as you know. He keeps telling us that. Exactly, exactly. Sad to see the history and culture of our great country being ripped apart with the removal of our beautiful statues and monuments. Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, who's next? Washington? Jefferson? So foolish. And that is, of course, President Donald Trump. Uh, tell me, Don, is, is taking down Confederate monuments, is that foolish? No. It's, monuments are a statement of what we want to honor. It's not necessarily memory. I mean, uh, we have museums for memory. We have books for memory. Uh, the fact that the monuments go away is not a statement that we're you know, killing our history, as some want to say. Uh, they're a statement that we change times, that things, have, uh, that things today are not the same as they were uh, when these monuments were put up. And uh, there's plenty of reason for saying, you know, we, adjust, we adapt and we adjust to new circumstances. That is ultimately one of the problems that sometimes people have, is that uh, when you look at this, why did you put the monument up? What, you know, what was its purpose? And oftentimes these monuments were put up without, they were not put up for the purpose of, of a, a straight statement of this is wonderful Southern heritage. Uh, some of them were directly put up for the purpose of making a statement to various ethnic groups. Well, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, I do think Trump is, is speaking to a larger fear. You've talked about you know, what we want to remember. Um, and generally speaking, I think we want to remember good things. But, but we're good people as well. But where do you draw that line? Um, there, there's a lot of people who have, uh, shall we say, questionable beliefs in the past. Uh, Washington was a slave owner. Um, MLK was, was against gay marriage for conversion therapy. Um, Teddy Roosevelt was a blatant racist. FDR put people in, in camps. If we take down one, and I think this is a fear a lot of Americans have, if we take down one, how can we not take down the others? Well, first of all, it's why, uh, what's, what are you memorializing? Okay. Uh, Washington, actually, actually, he's a rather bad example. Yes, he was a slave owner, but at the end of his life, he had come to the realization that slavery was evil and actually made it very, uh, made it, uh, in his last will and testament, made it virtually impossible for his, free, his slaves not to be freed. So he's probably not the place to go. And when, uh, when uh, the president used him as an example, my first thought was, don't know your history real well on that one. But Jefferson, a conflicted man. Hero, uh, the people we consider heroic, Okay, and in this case, by the way, we're memorializing those individuals. Uh, heroes, are, nobody's perfect. Okay, what is it we want to remember? Uh, what is it we're trying to memorialize in these people? Uh, the best things about them, the thing that, that made them special. Okay, uh, Dr. King, uh, it was very much, you know, he spoke to uh, a desire what it, about what it meant to be American and the, uh, the idea of an inclusive America. Uh, the, uh, with Jefferson, the idea of an independent country that had ideals for human beings. Uh, for George Washington, the willingness to fight to create that, uh, that, uh, that dream. This, uh, this is true for a lot of people. Okay? These are, you're right, these are flawed individuals. Uh, Roosevelt, uh, his work in, uh, to uh, win World War II, his, uh, his work to uh, get America through the Depression, Yes, he did. Uh, the uh, the internment of uh, Japanese Americans was horrible. I live you know, in California, where I grew up. Uh, it, it by the time you know I grew up in the '60s in California, and I got to tell you, by that point we were learning a lot about this. Okay, no one's going to tell you. Uh, no one I grew up with is going to tell you that in any way, shape, or form that was a good idea, and that we should ever ever do that again. But that was not what Roosevelt was all about. Okay, the the Civil War memorial has become different because they are about the Civil War, okay? And then you have to look at what the Civil War is all about. That's what makes them different. So, so context. That plays a significant role. We'll, we'll come back to context. Um, but, but first I want to talk about something a little different. Um, 
when I did my research for, for this, and I know a lot about, and we've talked a lot about the topic, mm -hmm. but when I did my research, one thing I was real surprised at was actually the number of people who are actually against taking these statues down. Um, we're, we're talking generally two-thirds of the people polled um, from anywhere from CNN to NPR to CBS are against taking these statues down. Uh, but at the same time, I do understand the perspective of the, the minority of people who, f who feel deeply offended by these statues. Uh, the issue aside, how do we balance these two really diametrically opposed? W what's the compromise that we can have to make every sure everybody wins? Well, first of all, no one that I know of is advocating the destruction of the memorials. Okay, you take them down, put them in a museum. They still exist. They're just not on the public. No, they're not in the public. Okay, where they're where the public itself is making a statement. That's one way. But I also want to give context to some of these polls. They do these national polls, right? And you got to understand, like where I grew up. As I went a few minutes ago, I mentioned California. Uh, when I grew up. Uh, we, uh, the way we learned about the Civil War, the Civil War didn't really happen in California. That's where people came to avoid the Civil War, right? So basically our, what we learned about it was pretty much what particularly the uh, uh, daughters of the uh, Confederacy wanted us to learn, or wanted everyone to learn, which was, you know, it was all about these various issues and uh, that you know, slavery was just kind of a minor thing. And, and so, you know, I come here and admittedly because I, uh, moved here and was teaching military history, I had to learn, said, oh, th maybe this is a little more, more complex than that, so we're not going to get into that at this moment. Because what I want to get at is that all my friends out west, right, which is a significant portion of the country, but uh, uh, I talked to them today and they go, well, we don't understand why anyone cares about this. I said, you know, if I were living back in California or Washington or Oregon and, you know, where I'd grown up, I probably would ask that same question. And the reason for that is they have no context. They don't have the context of what, it, uh, of what these, uh, this region of the country went through. Okay? And so to them, the, they're just statues. Okay? And that's why. You know, who's, who cares? But here at the statue, they mean more. Okay? And so this polling data, when you do a national poll, and of course to be reflective, right, they're going to do certain numbers from places that have no connection to this. And that is always going to skew the numbers to some degree. It's not that these people are lying. It's just that they don't have, or that they're evil or bad. They just don't know the, the reason why people in this part of the, uh, there are people in this part of the country who really do get upset about it. I'm going to bring it back to context. And I, and I have a perfect quote for context. Um, this is, this is Charles, the, the late Charles Krauthammer. And this is what he had to say. I think every monument has a different history, content, and context. And if we were rational, we would evaluate them in that context. Some of the statues were sincerely held tributes and symbols of reconciliation. Now, on the other hand, a hundred years later, many southern states put up statues to the Confederacy, not because of the Civil War, but to show to their resistance to civil rights and Supreme Court rulings on desegregation. That's a very different category, and that's where I think it becomes more problematic. But that's why I think it is a mistake to say categorically, yes, we keep them all, and categorically, no, we take them all away. Um, con context is important. And, and I would actually agree with Krauthammer in that one, is that, uh, but even the ones that were put up early on, the heart, I understand what he's getting at, but here's where the problem comes with that, is that we get back to then, why did the South fight the Civil War in the first place? And that's the thing that is missing from his context. And uh, talking about the ones that are sincerely talking about reconciliation, well, you don't put up a, a statue to Robert E. Lee talking about reconciliation. And the reason you don't is that he is one of the leaders of an effort to break the country up. Okay, that's kind of like saying uh, you want to go ahead and uh, memorialize, you want to go ahead and show the reconciliation of Europe by putting up a, uh, a monument in 1946 to, you know, Heinz Guderian, the, uh, uh, the, general, uh, the uh, uh, chief of staff of the German, uh, the German army during World War II. Okay, that's, that doesn't do it. Okay, so I, well, I understand well, the idea. Let me but speak, you bring up that Lee was trying to break apart the country. Um, I think one of the big reasons, and a lot of Northerners agreed with this, one of the big reasons he's remembered 
is because he actually helped bring the country together when the war was over. Yeah, but um, that's not what we're memorializing with that. No one's, but, no but one's, again, it's no one's the saying, intent behind the statue. That, that's well, what not if you have intent. perfectly innocent intent in putting up a, a statue? And, well, and I'll talk about the individual cases of putting up statues of Robert E. Lee and other guys mm -hmm. like him. But if, if, say, a community has a respect for Lee because not only what he did in the war, but what he did after, bringing the country back together, What's wrong with us well, well, putting up a statue to that? My question is, how much did he have to do with bringing the country back together? Especially after costing the country, uh, play, uh, fighting a war that cost America, uh, the United States 2% of its population. You know, even Lee himself said, don't do this. So, are we going to ignore Lee himself? We're we going to ignore the man and say, well, we're going to put up a statue to you even though you don't want one? Yeah, context becomes important here, too. Okay. The, Lee is the symbol of rebellion. That's what he is the symbol of. When you put him up, that's what you're saying. You're not saying reconciliation. Because how many people really think about Robert E. Lee and reconciliation? Well, I think they think about him in, in broad context of him personally as a very honorable man, very upstanding guy, um, very, very respectful to his duty. He felt he was doing his duty. You and I, we can disagree on whether or not he should have or should not have. but. Uh, he was following what he thought to be right, even if he's wrong. And I think there's a good argument to be made he was wrong. And many people mm -hmm. would make that argument. But let's go back to Heinz Guderian. So we can put a statue up to him. Well, I don't think we can confer Confederate soldiers to, to Nazis. He's with, not with actually, all. he was never, he was never uh, convicted of a war crime. He was never even accused of a war crime. They no, no war crimes trials. So, so bad jury? No, he, wasn't, there was no, he was never even a tribe. They never even, my point being, okay, that when you're dealing with this, and Robert E. Lee and, he, you know, and the Nazis, are, you always lose the argument. You go to the Nazis, you're always losing. But my point is more a matter of these individuals, okay? Individuals. What is it you're attempting to, uh, you know, when you put the statue up, what are you attempting to memorialize? Is it, you know, uh, Lee may have been all those things, okay? But when you put the statue up, no one's saying we're putting the statue up because he's such a wonderful man. They're putting the statue. You, you think that? You know, there may be a few who've made. The, you see these introductory speeches when they make it. Of course, they're going to talk about the guy. But why did you actually build the statue? Well, and that's a different story. Do you think there's different motive? There's a lot of statues of Lee, and mm -hmm. I think it'd be a mistake. And I think Krauthammer echoes this. It's a mistake to say they were all put up for the same reason. Oh, and I'm not going. To, and I, I'm picking on Robert E. Lee only because he's the best known, and he's the. And frankly, he'd be the hardest one to make an argument about one way or the other. Uh, because you're right, okay? You could, if you put up a statue to the Robert E. Lee of 1848, who was a uh, Mexican war hero, you know, I don't, know, I don't know how you make an argument against that one, because he was a Mexican war hero. Uh, uh, if they have a statue on the grounds of the West Point, because he was the superintendent of West Point for a number of years, perfect, uh, a perfect place to have that, okay? If you put one up in 1865, you're probably not putting it up for purposes of saying what a great guy he was. Okay, you're making another statement. That so there's where context comes in. Okay, uh, it depends on what part of this person's life you're depicting. What are you attempting to memorialize about that individual? It becomes very easy to just you're right generalize. I'm not. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, no, uh, so while I'm picking on Lee, uh, it sounds like the reality is is that. Uh, when you're dealing with things of this nature, you need to see what, they are, what they're attempting to memorialize. And uh, when you pick a person, it's always easy to say, well, they're this, 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 and this. They're a good person, so we're putting the statue up to them. Yeah, but why do, why do you care about this person? Okay? Most people who are putting the statues up to, to Robert E. Lee after 1865 are not, uh, they care about him because of the Civil War. They don't care about him because he was a Mexican War hero. They don't care about him because he was superintendent of West Point. They don't care about you know, all this stuff that you could actually make an argument is very the honorable part of the guy that. Uh, but but why, why shouldn't they care about him? Uh, particularly the Southerners. Um, one out of four Southern men were killed in the Civil War. Um, why shouldn't they care about this guy? He, he, was, he was their leader. I, can, you, can we really expect the whole people to just forget about him overnight? Oh, who's saying forget about him? But I, uh, you know, we don't want to sponge him from the history texts. We, uh, uh, no one's saying that we suddenly want to you know, take him out of all the museums. But do we memorialize the man who basically, okay, let's call, uh, let's call it the way it was. He's a traitor. You know? And he lost. Well, and he George fought. Washington was a traitor. As yeah, well. he was, and he won.
There's the difference. Well, <laughs> if you but not much of a difference. If you win, you uh, if you win, it's amazing uh, how that covers up a lot of other stuff. But uh, keep in mind what they were fighting for. Uh, yes, slavery is part of the world that Washington is fighting for, but it's a part of the world Washington is fighting for. Slavery was the world that Robert E. Lee was fighting for. You can't divorce the Civil War from slavery, and thus you can't divorce slavery from Robert E. Lee. Well, Even th no matter what Lee might have thought, and by the way, there's all the evidence about what Lee thought about slavery is pretty spotty. Well, I well, you bring up Robert Washington. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask. Let me ask you this question, and this might be a facetious question. Might if, be. If, I've known you too long. If George Washington. George Washington had, say he had lived longer, and say the Civil War had come sooner. Which side of the war do you think he would have been on? And, and should we memorialize him if he was on the Southern side? Interestingly enough, you pick the wrong person to make this argument about. Pick the right person for no. me. Hmm? Well, the reason he's the wrong person is that actually uh, there is some evidence that he was quietly letting people know that if there was a breakup of the country that he planned on possibly moving north, uh, maybe into Pennsylvania. Uh, so there's evidence. I, I can't say this is not, none of this is absolute, no biographers are going to go and say that he absolutely believe this, but there's, there's evidence that he might very well. So that's why he's not a good choice. Uh, if you want to make the argument, uh, kind of look at uh, this uh, the way you're going, then who is the good person? Especially out of, Francis, uh, Francis Mary, South Carolina. Well, you take a look, at, if you watch the movie The Patriot, you get the impression that every, uh, everybody around him was happy and, you know, God, that movie's, I love the movie, but the history of that movie sucked. Okay, it was really bad. Uh, there are two things that are accurate about that movie. One is there was a South Carolina, or there is a South Carolina and there was an American Revolution. After that, throw everything else out. Uh, but it's a fun movie, by the way. If you get a chance to watch it, watch it. Uh, now, probably among the founders, if I were gonna make your argument, Jefferson would probably be the closest to be able to, because he is such a conflicted individual about slavery, uh, and he was so connected to Virginia that it was unlikely that he would have, that uh, a breakup of the country would have pulled him out of it. Uh, but that didn't happen, and uh, the situation wasn't such. So we can't really, uh, you know, we can't really say whether or not we should memorialize him at this point. Uh, we simply can work with what we have. Not going to answer my question. Of course not. All right. Well. Well, let's talk about the Confederate flag. Um, and uh, you know Shelby Foote? Yes. Um, I have a quote by Shelby Foote, and I think it's, uh, I think it's poignant. Um, let me read it. I, I do know perfectly well what pain the Confederate flag causes my black friends, but I think that pain is not necessary. If they would read the Confederate Constitution and they knew what the Confederacy really stood for, tell, tell me about that. D does learning more history make you more favorable the Confederacy or less favorable? Less. Less. Let me, let's say, and I grew up with kind of a, what would be a generic, the Civil War was about states' rights stuff, okay? I moved to, you know, what I love about being a historian, okay, a political historian in particular, but a historian in general, is that issues become more complex the more you study them. You get into them and you find there are these little uh, strands that go off in all these different directions. And it's fascinating, right? You can follow the strands and it's how I ended up doing what I'm doing. I followed one little strand and it went off in a fascinating direction and I ended up working on a project for five years because of that, okay? I came back here, as I mentioned, but I had to learn the Civil War because it really wasn't, so, yeah, you know, I, I knew World War II, you know, when you grow, again, you grow up on the Pacific Coast, World War II is really big. Uh, and uh, I move out here and say, so, okay, well, I guess, you know, I knew the revolution, I gotta, I gotta learn the Civil War. It's not one of those that was really big for me as a kid. And I discovered something. It is, the Civil War, among all the things I've ever studied as a historian, is an anomaly. Because it's, uh, the more and the more I studied it, the one thing I discovered was its origins became less and less complex. No matter what you do, it comes down to slavery. Yeah, you know, well, well, let's talk about and that. And that is, yeah. Uh, well, you have everything from uh, Alex uh, uh, let's see, Alexander, Alexander Stevens, Stevens. His, uh, his speech, in which he basically said that the uh, Confederacy is based on the, prem uh, on the premise that the uh, white man is superior to the black man. Uh, the Abraham, Abraham Lincoln said the same thing. 
initially, and uh, he had some. He had a change of heart. Yeah, well, quite through. Um, he did free the slaves, but he wanted to deport them all initially. Uh, now that, by the way, the uh, little said that one of the most fallacious arguments you get is, well, the North wasn't fighting to free the slaves. That's true initially. They did, they did eventually, but they did, that wasn't. But that's not why the that's irrelevant to why the South was fighting the Civil War. The North could have fought it because they thought little green men were coming when, down. When you say the South, w w what do you mean by the South? Literally, the th well, in this case, the eleven states that ultimately you know, we could add. Yes, we could add so the border the, so states. So the states, the government. Mm -hmm. um, what about the ordinary people? There's a lot of monuments to the ordinary people. I, James McPherson, um, great historian. He, he went through letters, uh, diaries. He wanted to get a picture of why each man fought. Mm -hmm. um, and in two-thirds of the cases, it wasn't, wasn't slavery. It, it wasn't even states' rights. It was loyalty, um, and it was patriotism. It was, I'm, I'm here because my state is here, and how can I not fight for my state? Now, we're Americans. We, we tend to reject that kind of uh, tribalism, but they didn't. And, and how is it wrong to memorialize them when they, the individual Southern soldiers, really weren't fighting for slavery? Well, first of all, the war was about slavery. The, if, the, if the South doesn't... The war was about a lot of things. No, this war, this war was about slavery. Uh, that, that's the, the wonderful kind of we want to go ahead and we want to make sure granddad wasn't fighting for something evil. Okay? <laughs> and that's it. That's it. For Americans, this is the, the, the kind of the tableau behind this whole thing, is this you know, the idea that, you know, we, well, we want to make sure that you know, our family, no one wants to think granddad fought for something evil. Okay? I'm not a big fan of think of, of you know, even though he was not himself a Nazi, I am not a big fan of thinking that uh, it, it, he's uh, this relative of mine. By the way, I'll point out Heinz Guderian is actually a relative of mine. We're by marriage, thankfully. But I'm not. I'm not a fan of thinking about the fact he fought for something that I consider ultimately evil. But guess what? I can't deny that either. Okay. And I think there's a d great desire on the part of many Americans, uh, particularly Southerners, who had family who fought in the Civil War, and they may have fought, you know, uh, well. And yeah, in military terms, we would have said honorably, but that the cause, that they don't want to think that the cause they were fighting for was something that today we all look at and go, yeah, that was wrong, okay? No one wants to think Red Dad fought for something that was wrong. I understand that, okay? Uh, and like I said, even today, I've got slightly more personal connection to that because it, go, you know, it goes right to uh, not too long into the past. But in the end, we have to accept that. Uh, so this war, uh, now, can you memorialize, uh, if you, when you memorialize the Civil War, you're memorializing why we fought it. Now, can you memorialize individuals? This becomes where it's problematic to me. Well, well I'll give you an example. Um, right here in St. Louis, we, ha or we, we did have a monument to Confederate veterans, not Confederate soldiers, Confederate veterans. Mm -hmm. um, they intentionally built the monument with no weapons on it because they, they didn't want to memorialize the war. Um, do, you, do you have a problem with that kind of statue? You know, uh, frankly, that's one of those things I have not thought much about. Okay, understand, first of all, we're having a conversation, and I'm not a specialist in this. Uh, I tend to do other types of history and other types of political science. Uh, this is just, so everything you're getting from me is kind of the, the rambling thinkings of somebody who's done military history and kind of how I respond to that. Uh, memorializing veterans of the losing side. <coughs> they were still on the losing side. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I'm not 100% sure where I, honestly, on that. Uh, but I wouldn't, I, in that case, I'd look at the context of why it was put up where it was put up and what was the purpose, uh, and uh, the timing of it being put up. The timing of it being put up may, may have very well have been very important. I don't know enough about this particular monument to be able to make a statement. What do you make of so 13 states, um, or 11 states in the 11. Confederacy? 11. Yeah, the, although if you go down to Texas, you'll see an obelisk that lists yeah, they 13. Claim 13. They claim 13, but Missouri never yeah. seceded, and neither did Kentucky. The, the, governor, the governor here seceded. The, no, the guy is lonesome. Yeah, well. He got a rump of the legislature to do it, but it was a, it was a small minority. And actually, by the way, if you want to see the records of that rump legislature and what they did, uh, they actually have them at the uh, uh, Missouri Military History Museum down in uh, just south of Jefferson City. It's really fascinating. 
What about the states that uh, didn't secede over slavery? Uh, and the, the way we know that is because uh, they have their articles of secession, why they seceded. And for the lower South states, it was, it was about slavery. Mm -hmm. And they say it was about slavery. But for states like North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, Arkansas, states that seceded after, after Lincoln called up troops um, and after Fort Sumter, uh, no mention of slavery. So yeah, can you make an argument that, they, that those four states seceded over slavery? Yes. Because the one, re, uh, one thing that's keeping them in the, uh, in the Union uh, is that the North, uh, Northern states had agreed to a constitutional amendment that is still floating around and theoretically could be ratified that would have made slavery constitutional, actually put slavery in the Constitution. So you get a situation like that, there's no particular reason to leave if you might get that. Once the shooting started, then it became obvious that they were never going to get that amendment, so they left. Uh, so there's a tendency to think, oh, well, you know, n nothing happened that would have kept them in. No, there is actually something happened that, uh, that they, on the topic of slavery, specifically, that was designed to keep them in the Union. If that wasn't the issue, then why put the amendment in? Well, let me, let me talk about the Confederate flag. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the flag? Should, should, should regular Americans fly the flag or no? Frankly, I'm not a fan. No? No. no. Uh, the re am I going to tell people they shouldn't fly a flag? Yeah, probably not. I, I would say, I, I tend not to, but to me it's kind of, the, there are lots of flags in the world that are interesting and historical, but shouldn't be. Uh, I will admit it is my philosophy not to offend people unnecessarily. You know from my courses that I already have to offend people enough as it is. <laughs> Uh, by things I have, you know, in the types of courses I teach that on occasion I have to offend students, and that's fine. But why offend, so I've always taken a philosophy in life about why offend people unnecessarily. Why do you, if you're flying the Confederate flag, you're really not flying it because it's my heritage. Fly an American flag then, okay? No, you're flying it because you want to make another type of statement. It, it may or may not, and I'm not saying it's racist even. Okay, that's not necessarily it. There are people who will fly that flag, but they're making a statement other than the fact that, you know, I'm kind of a proud American type of thing. What that is is individual to them. But why offend people if you don't need to? And with that, uh, we have to close it out. Uh, thank you folks for watching, and tune in sometime soon for another great episode with great people like Don. Thank you.